Hello Python programmers. So in this video, I'm going to show you that how you can track the real time price of Bitcoin or any other virtual cryptocurrency using Python. So first of all, let's see what is the system requirement. So first of all, we'll install the required packages. So just click on the CMD here and just write pip install just a second pip install requests because we are going to use the coin market cap api so we will require this request library so just write pip install request and press enter and this package will be installed for you so i have already installed this so i won't waste the time in showing you how to install this so i'll provide this link in the description you need to go to this website this is coin market cap api and there you can see it is showing the real time price and volume and circulating supply i, I don't really know what all these value means because i'm like zero in knowledge of cryptocurrency so, so there you can see you can see many types of cryptocurrency here bitcoin ethereum and many here okay so you need to scroll down uh, you need to scroll all the way down and crit and click on this crypto api just click on this link and you'll be redirected to this page then click on get your api key now and you will land a to this sign up page where you can create a free and basic personal use account if you want to just use this for fun but if you are really serious then you can select the options from here okay so I have already created the account so after creating you will land to a page which will look somewhat like this now what you have to do is first of all you need to copy this api and just paste it somewhere and then click on the api documentation Okay, so but before continuing to this project, I'm gonna give a big shout out to our Whitebird subscriber because I have just asked in my previous video where I was creating the factorial tree. Actually, I have created the two branched factorial tree and I have given the assignment to create the three branch factorial tree and this Whitebird guy and by your email id i guess your name is ahmed so big shout out to you i'll provide the link for that code in my documentation you can download that and i'll also provide the link for the ahmed's channel so you can visit that also okay so let's move on to our project and what you need to do is you need to click on the cryptocurrency and then cryptocurrency listing latest and then and then you can see on the right hand side you are having a few options for languages like this is curl node.js python php java c sharp and go we are using python here so we'll select python and we'll simply do the thing that most programmers do that is ctrl plus c going back to our editor and ctrl plus v <laughs> okay but you need to make some changes here what you will do you will uh, where is the api key there it is you need to copy the api key and then paste it over here okay you need to paste the link over here do not worry i'll try to explain you the codes 
and we'll also reduce this code so that it's very easily understandable we do not need BTS here and we want to extract only the price of our Bitcoin so so first of all let's see what is the output for this uh, for this command or this program so we'll save this and run and make sure that your internet is connected because this is this API is extracting the value through internet and there you can see we are having the value uh, no it's not it's showing the uh, market price where it is just a second just a second name Bitcoin symbol BTC and let's move let's move this is the market supply total supply platform none last updated this goes here t there you can see this is the price here so what we need is we need to extract this price key value pair so let's do this so the data is the variable in which all this data is stored so uh, we'll index the price only so let's create a variable price and from data uh, what is the first index the first index is uh, let's scroll to the very starting uh, we do not need the status uh, we need this data uh, key here so first we'll extract the data key so we'll write data here make sure that the spelling is correct otherwise it will show an error then we'll extract the first value because there you can see it's inside a list and then what we'll do is uh, we do not need ID, we do not need the name, we do not need the symbol, no slug. We need to extract uh, just a second uh, inside this quote index. So we'll write Q U O T E uh, Q U O T E. Okay and okay so let's save this and let me show you how these things are working so there you can see it's showing the value which was inside the code so from inside the code we need to extract the value which is stored in uh, let's move ahead let's move ahead let's move ahead and we need to extract the value stored in this USD so we'll simply write USD here and from USD then after that we'll extract the price so let's save this and, and let's run this and we are still printing the data we need to print the price after this variable so we'll simply print our price here print price let's save this and run this and there you can see this is the real-time uh, value of our Bitcoin now let me break down this uh, indexing of this data variable so that you can see step by step how we are indexing that data so i'll comment out each one first let's extract the date first let's see that how the data variable is i know you have seen that already but as we are moving step by step let's see there you can see 
this is our data um, variable this is the value stored in our data variable and first of all we do not need this status index uh, we need this data index because inside data index only we are having our price there you can see I just moved it And there you can see this is the price here so first of all we need to extract the data so I'll comment the rest of the section we'll print oh, uh, only the section or uh, uh, inside this data index so let's run this and there you can see all the uh, values stored inside that data index are stored now what we need is we need to extract not the id not the name we need the values inside our quote tax but there you can see that this is stored inside a list so first of all we need to index the zero one so i'll comment this out to show you and there you can see now we are having that key value pair so we can extract the quote key let's comment the rest out if we run this there you can see uh, all the values inside the quote uh, index now we need the USD and we'll comment the price and there you can see it's showing the price volume and all the uh, data present if you want to create a more complex project uh, which is showing the data of various uh, cryptocurrency in a GUI and not only showing the prices but also showing the volume and percentage change so you can extract each of the values from here by indexing I just want to create a very simple program so I'm just extracting the price here but you can create a more complex project and if you want you can send me so that i can give you a shout out like ahmed so let's save this and let's run this and there you can see we are getting the real time price of our uh, bitcoin now let's start from the very starting and see how the code is actually working so first of all we have taken the coin market api this is our api and and this is the api url and so we are extracting all the information from that api and then storing this into this data variable there you can see this session is getting from this url and the parameters are this then after storing all the data into this data variable we are converting this into a json format and then we are indexing to get our required value now this is stored in a try and accept loop so that if this try is not working or we are having any kind of error let me show you what type of error can occur if we go here and just scroll down a little bit then then there, then there you can see 200 is the code for success 400 is for bad request 401 for unauthorized 403 for forbidden 420 for too many requests 500 for internal server errors so these are the possible error that may occur 
so to eliminate those error we are using a try and accept here so that if we are having any connection error or timeout error or too many redirects error it will print that it is having such error okay so this is it for this video i tried my best to create this video as short as possible and as to the point as possible i hope you like it and and i'll meet you in my next lecture where we'll create something more awesome bye bye